A Passo Chupacabra Disco. My name is Misty Rainwater Lights, and I'm reading an excerpt from my self published bizarro novella, Bunny Man. I wrote the first edition of this book in 2008 or 2009 revised it, published it, revised it numerous times, and this version was published in 2017. <clears throat> you can purchase an autographed copy directly from me for $79, free shipping and handling from San Antonio, Texas. I sell books and art so rarely that I feel compelled to jack the prices up sky high so that one cell can feel like five or some shit. <clears throat> okay. And I filled this version, this latest version of uh, Many Man with black and white photographs that have nada to do with the narrative. Finally, Kietis and Velvet Jane went to fuck me harder land. They fucked like crazed coyotes. They screamed obscenities. They lost count of their orgasms. They shared a hot shower so sudsy, so steamy, so baby, baby, we got something gooey and yummy. This love is so huge it will never fucking die. Let's see what Amethyst is up to, Kietis said after they got dressed. Why, do you want to fuck her now, Velvet Jane said. She loathed herself as she spoke the words. Even after a lusty, deep and true fuckfest, the jealousy was a ragged bitch that refused to fucking die. I just thoroughly fucked you, baby doll. I ain't got nothing left for several hours. I feel sorry for the poor thing. She doesn't have a friend in this world. She needs us, honey. She needs us, honey cunny. She needs our guidance. She needs our support. She needs our unconditional love. Of course, I don't know what I was thinking. I get so primal when it comes to you. Go knock on her door. I need to shave my legs real quick. As Velvet Jane sat on the counter shaving her legs, she thought about purchasing a honey-colored wig and silicone implants. Then she realized she wasn't thinking at all, so she stopped the non-thoughts and focused on the moment. The moment was black stubble on her white legs. Kietis entered the bathroom wearing a worried expression on his smooth, pale face. She won't answer the door, babe, Kietis said. Knock louder, scream her name, threaten to call the cops, Velvet Jane said. Uh, okay. Kietis returned two or three minutes later. His face was still smooth and pale yet worried. Didn't work. Do you think she's dead? I doubt it, darling. She's much too nubile to be dead. I bet she took off with the burly truck driver. Why would she do that? And we're the only ones here. Perhaps we are no longer the only ones here. Perhaps our good friend Amethyst is getting fucked by a burly truck driver as we speak. She's probably halfway to Los Angeles by now. She's a survivor. She's a road warrior. She's miss most likely to survive zombie apocalypse. Well, I'm concerned. If you aren't concerned, I'm concerned about your character. Don't be concerned about my character. I just met the chick, and I am not terribly emotionally invested. I'm more than a little jealous. I don't like that about myself, but there it is. Centuries of the white patriarchal gaze do tend to leave a nasty residue. I have no hair, and my tits are less than phenomenal. We had some good sex, and I hope that trend continues. Amethyst is sex on a fucking stick. I'm certain she is alive and well. I'm not so certain. Maybe a serial killer hacked her into tiny pieces and threw those pieces into a garbage disposal. Come on, let's go check out the lounge downstairs. We'll ask around. Velvet Jane and Kietis shared the elevator with Albert Einstein Truman Capote, Ava Gardner, and Lewis Carroll. Albert 
Einstein sneezed. Bless you, Ava Gardner said. Does anyone know if there is a masseuse on the premises? Truman Capote asked. There isn't one. I asked the lady at the front desk when I checked in, Lewis Carroll said. Have any of you seen a scrawny yet appealing chick in a white t-shirt and cooter shorts? Kiatis asked. I saw her in the lobby a couple of hours ago. She left with a man in a loud Hawaiian shirt and Bermuda shorts. They took off in a red convertible, Truman Capote said. I told you not to worry, Velvet Jane told Kiedis with a smirk. The lounge was filled with attractive couples. Ken plus Barbie equals love forever. Heather and Bryce, Megan and Matt, Chrissy and Calvin, Crystal and Chewy. <clears throat> the lounge was a perfume commercial. The lounge was Coca-Cola. The lounge was Andy Warhol, so glossy and relevant in the pages of Vanity Fair. Dean Martin was on stage crooning a sleazy rendition of Sweet Child of Mine. Velvet Jane and Kieta sat down at the bar. The lighting was classier than Paris Hilton's ass. I'll have a stupendous circus penis, Velvet Jane said. And I'd love to drop those panties and spread those legs, Kieta said. The bartender was Henry Miller, circa 1944. He winked at Velvet Jane. Velvet Jane smiled and blushed. Kiedis put his arm around Velvet Jane and glowered at Henry Miller. Moonlighting? Velvet Jane asked Henry Miller. I just got this job to boost my literary career. I get all the pussy I can stand working this gig. I enjoy the pussy so much I write about it. The pussy inspires me. The pussy sells books. It's a glorious cycle. Bunny man... You may purchase an autographed copy, Muchas Gracias, for watching, liking, subscribing, sharing.